There you are. <laughs> As it happens, the vote went through. The eyes have it. Uh, well, to discuss this important matter and the fact that it's been at the Assembly three times, we've got Patsy McGlone of the SELP and Roy Beggs of the UUP. You're both very welcome. Now, I'm not dismissing the fact that getting an NHS dent dentist is difficult. It is a matter of concern for many people. But does it really need to be debated three times on the floor of this House? Well, I suppose maybe if you're sitting out there waiting to get treatment by an NHS dentist, it couldn't be debated often enough as long as there was some action about it. But I, I do take your point insofar as um, what we have is here, basically... We have a number of motions been brought forward by, for discussion debate in the Assembly because of lack of executive business. Now, that's clearly because of the Sinn Féin DUP access standoff on, on the issues that have been well rehearsed here. Uh, and the Business Committee is accepting motions which are put forward by the respective parties. Indeed, Tommy Gallagher, my own colleague, put forward the original motion about dental care some months ago. And it was debated at that time. But I raised it today at the Business Committee, which we attend as party whips. And uh, there's a paper to be brought forward about repetitive motions which have been discussed, say, within the recent times, the need to bring them back again. Really, you should be saying if there is a material change, if there's some, something else happening out there that wasn't the case, say, when the original motion was debated, there may well be circumstances where that should be done. But repetitive motions over and over again, really, uh, you're reinventing the wheel. Well, um, do, you, do you agree, Roy Beggs? Is there something you support to try and to, to, to sort of clean out the, the kind of repetition? Well, uh, even at, at local Although, council, you normally aren't able to um, bring a, a matter back for discussion for a six months period. It would seem to be logical, unless something dramatic happens and warrants its further dis further discussion because the issue's moved on. You fell victim to this yourself, though, didn't you? Uh, I think it was about <laughs> six months between that. <laughs> yes, OK. So, I mean, it has happened before, uh, but it, it's, it's embarrassing, surely, that this place doesn't have enough business to keep you guys busy. I think that's that's mm -hmm. the real problem. And uh, instead of uh, the business committee having to fill out the day for a small portion of the day, uh, they're finding that there's this big gap because the legislation is not coming forward because it's trapped in the executive. And real business that we should be doing to improve people's lives is not being allowed uh, to manifest mm -hmm. itself in new legislation and decisions. Uh, so, I mean, in the absence of an executive meeting on Thursday, are we just going to see more of this next week? Well, I think we're going to have to come to the point where we discuss these matters and say, look, what is the best and most productive way of using time for members in here? Now, it was mooted that we would be down to one day a week of, of plenaries and discussions and debates, which, fair enough, it sends out a wrong message out there because what's happening is be, even members are genuinely committed to having major debates and discussions around issues. The real central theme of what government should be about and us as members holding that government and executive to account isn't happening. So... That DUP Sinn Féin stalemate out there is crippling everything else. And major decisions, major issues, and debate and discussion around those major decisions, that's not happening. Well, of course, both your parties could do something about it. Uh, it's been mooted before. Let's talk of it recently, Roy Beggs. What about going into opposition? Well, that's something that you always have to consider. But if you're going to go into opposition, you have to have something solid that you're certain you're, you're taking the right direction. Um, and I think at this moment in time our ministers are contributing. We find only yesterday that as a result of uh, Michael McGimsey we now are uh, removing prescription charges, something which affected the very vulnerable in our community and we want to try and achieve uh, uh, issues to which we have set forward in our manifesto. Uh, those positions of ministers will only leave if there's a reason for us to leave. And we had uh, Professor Sir George Bain here mm -hmm. uh, talking about the relocation of jobs from Belfast. Yes. Obviously something that would appeal to many members in here, Patsy Midlone, uh, not least yourself, from a rural constituency. Well, absolutely. And just if I could add to the point that Roy made there, um, even if you had opposition politics here, opposition to what? Because that DUP Sinn Féin axis is not working, so therefore oppose what? Um, it's that sort of crippling circumstances we're in, and the sooner we move on the better. To get back to your original point, your original question, from a big rural constituency with a host of people uh, travelling up and down to Belfast to work in, in Belfast every day, civil service, there are a huge host of economic issues, saving on fuel, uh, helping, helping the environment, and also social circumstances within families where, especially young mothers, this takes a huge chunk out of their day in terms of where, where they're trying to juggle and balance uh, care for their children at the same time as working. Do you think it will happen? There. I mean, do, do, do you both think that this relocation uh, project will actually happen, given what's happened in other places? Well, it depends if it gets on through, or through the executive, the way things are going. That's the first hurdle that has to happen. Um, I think there's, there's a very positive lesson from Scotland, uh, where they uh, had to pull back and move forward at a sensible rate, a cautious rate, and a, and a rate which uh, showed value for money. In other words, move at key times when 
uh, new bodies were being created, where you're not having to pay for relocation costs. You do one thing I thought was was missing from the document is, is the cost issue, and that's something that, that we all cannot mm. buy into until we know what it is. There's going to be huge pressures on the budget, and we need to know what the costs are. But I, like everybody else, was stuck on the, the motorway on the way in here this morning. Uh, there is huge pressure in Belfast that can't carry the, the cars on the road, and it's important that some jobs are lo mm. relocated. Uh, outside uh, the immediate Belfast city centre area. I don't know if it'll do anything for uh, MLA's travel expenses, Martina, which uh, you, you've been poring over, uh, but uh, <laughs> there's no question of relocating Stormont to, to different... I don't think so, although I don't way. doubt that there'll be a few MLA's out there that wouldn't mind Stormont going west of the ban. Uh, uh, well, I know uh, what, Tommy Gallagher. <laughs> Tommy Gallagher's uh, uh, bill well, was pretty high, of course, he's yeah. got a big mileage to do, hasn't Yes, he? in fairness, yeah. he also lives at the far end of Northern Ireland, the Fermanagh South Road. He had the highest mileage, I think, of around £14,929. Uh, and second to him was Billy Armstrong. The Ulster Union is coming from Mid Ulster at 9598. Around that as well, Tom Elliott, also from Anna South Strone. They're all pretty much on a par, all those west of the ban um, MLAs. Oh, well, I suppose, you know, if. if uh if um, the same savings could be made for civil servants, uh, you know, yep. you never know. But mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, gentlemen, uh, thank you both uh, right, very much. Thank you.